what's up? This is Ryan, aka Alok1, and welcome to Cuddle Code Tutorials, where you can learn test driven full stack web development using www.cuddle.cards, the open source implementation of the deepest card game under the sea. You can check out the site, the uh, code base, and the Discord community for both contributors and players of the game in the description to this video. So, today we're going to learn about test driven development or features in particular. We're gonna talk about why it's useful, what it consists of, and how you can do it for web applications like Cuddle. So why TDD? Well, first and foremost, because it's faster. This is a controversial point because uh, some engineers have complained historically that taking the time to write test code gets in the way of the other engineering work that you need to do. And that's understandable, but when you get into using test-driven development, you'll come to find that um, writing tests in the right way can actually save an enormous amount of time by targeting your focus on exactly the situations that you're developing for and jumping right into any of the edge cases that you're working on. Additionally, TDD improves your performance and your accuracy. So you can more specifically define what it is that your app is supposed to do, and you'll know with greater confidence when your application is behaving in the right way. So what is test-driven development? Well, it's using automated testing software like Cypress here, which is the predominant testing tool that we use for Cuddle.cards in order to write automated test cases that explain what your uh, application is supposed to do before you actually write the application code for your website. And this lets you have um, a, a clarity of thought about exactly what it is that your app is supposed to do. And again, that confidence that it really works when you write it correctly, as well as confidence that future changes don't break the old functionality because you can rerun the same tests that you used before. So let's look at how to do test-driven development in the context of a demo for a specific Cuddle feature. And before we dive into the, uh, the demo itself, let's talk about the context of the feature. So in the game of Cuddle, you can play these one-off effects like we see here for the six, where you discard a card and you're, uh, you get a unique effect based on the specific card that you played. In this case, the six is scrapping all the royals and the glasses eights on the field. And every time you do that, your opponent has a chance to counter the effect if they have a two in their hand. However, there are uh, certain situations where your opponent can't counter. And this is actually one of them because we can see because of our glasses eight that the opponent doesn't have a two in their hand. So the, uh, the overlay that pops up, which currently says opponent may counter, always appears whenever you play a one-off effect. But we'd like to handle this edge case a little bit more precisely by making it so that when you know for a fact that your opponent can't counter, instead, the overlay should read opponent must resolve. And we're going to use our testing software to uh, enormously speed up the process of getting into these situations, as well as to increase our confidence that we've thoroughly defined all the cases that we care about. So let's check it out. Okay, so before we dive into writing our tests and opening Cypress, let's take a moment to look at the organization of the tests in Cuddle. So in the tests folder, we have this E to E subfolder, which stands for end to end. That's all our Cypress tests. And then specs is where we put the actual tests themselves. We've got some out of game tests and the in game tests. This is an in game feature and it's specific, specifically about countering. So we're going to look in the countering spec file. As for the anatomy of an individual test file, we've got some imports at the top with various helper utilities. And then the tests are grouped with these describe blocks, which uh, create um, groups of tests that can be run together and whose output gets uh, sort of organized in the test runner. And inside each of those, we have these it functions, which are our individual tests. So it displays the cannot counter modal and resolves the stack when the opponent plays a one-off if the player has no twos, for example. Um, so each of these it calls is an individual test. They're grouped according to these describe categories, and each describe can have a before each hook, which runs some setup logic before the test actually starts. So in this case, the setup game as P1 function will run in every uh, before every test in that block, and it... Uh, wipes the database, goes home, creates two accounts, creates a game, joins that game as both players, 
and then navigates to the lobby and starts the game, at which point we make an assertion about the number of cards in our hand. And so we know that we're done uh, setting up and then we log that we finished. So this just ensures that every test runs inside the game from the perspective of player one who goes second. P0 goes first. So here at the bottom, I've set up my describe block with the test cases for this feature of whether to display opponent may counter or opponent must resolve. And you can nest describe blocks. So I've got separate describe blocks for the two subcategories of the opponent may counter cases and the uh, opponent must resolve cases, which I'll capitalize here. Okay. So with that, let's take a look at Cypress. You can open Cypress with the cuddle specific command of npm run u2e colon GUI, which opens it in UI mode. That'll open up the test runner. And um, while that's booting up, I'm going to add a, a dot only to this first test. Hit dot only, which will mean that when we run this file, this will be the only test that runs. So here's the Cypress test runner. I'm going to pick the countering spec. Okay. It's in here. Great. So this is what it looks like when Cypress runs in UI mode, loads the tests, and great. Our first test doesn't do anything yet. It doesn't even have a before each hook. So these tests should be run from the perspective of player zero, because we're just going to play one one-off effect and then uh, make some assertions. So uh, we'll call the setup game as the zero helper. And now that same test will start inside the actual game. Saving the test file will rerun the test runner. Great, so now it goes and we can see it's starting to actually interact with the application and it launches the game. This already is saving us time because we're focused on the specific uh, situation of getting into the game, which otherwise you would need to create two accounts and create a game and sign up for the game and ready up and then you could start being in the game. And then from there, it's even more complicated when you want to get to a specific situation. Like this case is for displaying opponent may counter when the player had neither glasses nor a queen. So uh, we've got a couple handy utilities for setting things up. Um, so we've got this load game fixture function, which takes uh, a fixture object that looks like this. It specifies player zero's hand points and face cards, and then the same for player one. You can also specify which cards go in the scrap or on top of the deck. Um, and this basically just makes an API call to a testing only endpoint in the back end that loads the game into this specific situation. So here, uh, we're going to play a one off, and it should display opponent may counter when the player has neither glasses nor a queen. So all we need is a one off in the player's hand. And to make sure that there are no other cards in play. Um, a part of what's nice about this testing setup is we can reuse a lot of uh, logic here. Okay, so this will ensure that the game gets uh, loaded from here and then that we specifically put it into the situation where the Ace of Clubs is the only card in hand. And check that. Great, okay, so that's what our test looks like. And I'll note that Cypress leaves the, the application open after the test so I can interact with it, which can be really handy for a number of purposes. But for now, I'm gonna keep going. So uh, after you, you make API calls, it's a good idea to make assertions about um, the state of the DOM because Cypress will keep retrying these assertions until they succeed or time out on a four second delay by default. Um, and so what I'm doing here is checking that the number of cards in the player's hand, it's actually data player hand card, should have a length of one. Because we are player zero, since we set the game up as P0, and we should have one card in hand. At which point, I like to log uh, loaded fixture. And then we know the test loaded correctly. Cool. Okay. And now it start to, it's time to start interacting with the application programmatically on behalf of the user. Okay, great. We loaded the game fixture. It knows that it's ready to proceed. So uh, what we can do now is get uh, that card in the player's hand. And these are jQuery style selectors. So this bracket means that it's uh, an attribute on the hand, uh, on the, the element that we're looking for. And here, um, we've got these helper 
selectors that are added just for testing, um, which if you look in the game view player hand, okay, so we, we bind this attribute of data player hand card equals the card's rank dash the card's suit. So uh, data player hand card equals the ace of clubs dot play. Okay, at which point um, we should get an overlay that appears with three different move choice options. Uh, and that also has a selector of data move choice equals one off. Okay, so notice when we look back at the test, it already programmatically clicks on the ace. So now we can dot click the one off option. Um, and then, well, why don't we watch that run for a second? Okay, so this should now play the card. It clicks it and oop, looks like data move choice one off isn't correct. Okay. Mm -hmm choice data move choice equals one off okay let's type something data move choice choice equals one off this is the one that i want okay cool so now That'll play the card as a one-off. And now we can make an assertion about the existence of the overlay here. This is in the game view. Um, so waiting for opponent to counter. This always says opponent may counter right now. And here I don't have a data psi attribute. I have an ID, so I'll use that instead. So waiting for opponent to counter scrim should appear. So ID hashtag selector, and this should be visible. Meanwhile, I'll check the test. Okay, we successfully clicked on the move choice card, and this is what it looks like when you play a one-off effect. Okay, so the uh, this overlay should be visible, and then it should contain text, and here's where we can specify what it's supposed to say. So opponent may okay, format that and save, and now it'll rerun. All right, looks good. We load the fixture, we click on the card, then the one-off, and the overlay appears, everything's passing. And it's good to be a bit paranoid and confirm that, okay, what if, because I'm describing functionality that already works, what if I am doing it in an incorrect way and this doesn't actually tell us that things are right? So I'm going to put the, uh, the other text just to make sure that this assertion actually checks correctly that uh, the right text appears. And look, it's looking for opponent must resolve. It doesn't find it. Great, that's a good indicator that we got it right. Okay, so this test works as intended. Let's move on to the next one. I'm using this dot only method here to run just one test at a time. And this will already have the same before each hook to set up the game. And a lot of the logic is actually exactly the same. So I can repeat this here. But the, the case is different. So here an opponent um, may counter when the player has glasses, but the opponent has a two in hand. So now um, I am going to give the player glasses and give the opponent a two. Let's say the two of spades. Okay, and then otherwise it's the same. We uh, we make sure the fixture load. We play the ace of clubs as a one off, and then we see that this appears the uh, the overlay, waiting for opponent to counter, and it should contain opponent may counter. Okay, play our one off, and great. There we go. Test passes. Cool. Okay. So we are done with the test cases for uh, displaying opponent may counter. And notice this is already the existing behavior. I didn't have to change anything yet. Um, but in test-driven development, we write the tests first. So now I'm going to move on to this next, uh, this next test. 
And this one should also load the game, but it doesn't actually do anything. It just finished setting up the game as P0 and then stopped because I haven't done the rest yet. And again, I get to reuse a lot of this test logic because it's very similar. Um, we're still going to play that Ace of Clubs, but here we expect different behavior. Opponent must resolve is what should appear in the overlay when the player has a queen. So now instead of this Eight of Diamonds, I'm going to give them a Queen of Hearts. Okay, great. And now the test should instead assert that the uh, opponent, waiting for opponent to uh, counter scrim, should say opponent must resolve. And this should fail. This is the first time we're making a test change that doesn't describe the existing behavior of the application. It says something new, which is that this text should read opponent must resolve. And it doesn't. It still says opponent may counter. Great. We've got our failing test case, which means now we can go and update the application to behave in the way that we actually want it to. So notice this overlay always says opponent may counter, and it shows up when a when we are waiting for the opponent to counter. So that's a computed property. This is a view application built in Viewdefy. Um, and I'm gonna add another computed property, waiting for opponent to counter message. Okay, and I like to work on one case at a time. So here, the case that we're working on is when we have a queen. There's another computed property uh, called player queen count. Okay, which is taken from the store, and that's the number of queens that the player has. Okay, so here uh, we can, waiting for opponent to counter message, turn this dot, uh, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create two variables. Um, so may counter equals opponent may counter, and then uh, must resolve is opponent must resolve. And then if this dot player queen count, which um, will count how many queens you have, and if you have more than uh, zero, meaning you have at least one, then we're going to return may uh, must resolve. And then otherwise we're going to return Okay, cool. So now I've saved this. That doesn't automatically rerun the test, so we'll refresh the page in Cypress. And I want to reiterate that being able to refresh the page and have it just immediately run everything continues to save us so much time. We jump straight into the use case. Oh, this says opponent may counter. Got it wrong. Ah, of course, I forgot to put the actual value of the computed property inside the overlay. So I defined the computed property, but now it needs to, instead of just always saying this, to say the actual message. So now we can rerun the test. And this time it should pass. Great, opponent must resolve. That's what we want. So we nailed this test case. On to the next one. Okay. So here, it should display opponent must resolve when a player has glasses while the opponent does not have a two. Okay, so let's take our same test logic, because again, it's very similar. We get to work very quickly this way. Player is still going to have an ace, and instead of a queen, they're going to have a two. Two diamonds, and the opponent doesn't have a two in their hand. Okay, so otherwise this should be the same. We still load the game fixture as specified, play the ace of uh, clubs as a one-off, and then it should say opponent must resolve in the overlay. Rerun the test. Okay, nice. Uh, so this is our failing test case. That's great. Again, we write our test cases to fail before we update the application. And the issue here is that the computed property that I wrote only pays attention to the, um, the queen count. It doesn't yet pay attention to these other more nuanced values. So let's create a few more variables to capture that situation. 
Um, there's already a computed property for uh, has glasses eight here, which says whether the player has a glasses eight. And so what we care about is the opponent's uh, queen count. So, uh, sorry, the, the number of twos in the opponent's hand, because the condition was if I have glasses as the player, while my opponent does not have a two in hand. So we need to know if they have a two in hand, which we can do um, using, so opponent has two, we'll use an array method here. So this dot opponent is a computed property that returns the entire opponent as an object. And they have a hand, which is an array of cards. And the dot sum method is a JavaScript array method, which will uh, tell us if any of the cards in the opponent's hand passes this uh, function. And here we'll say card dot rank is two. Okay, and that should return true if any of the opponent's hands have a rank of two, which means they have a two in their hand. So here, what we actually care about is either the player queen count is greater than zero, or, and this is a twofold condition, the um, this dot has glasses, eight, and not opponent has two. Okay, formatted, that's updated. Let's try the test again. Oh, my test is incorrect. I, I have the two of diamonds out. Need the, I need an eight in hand. Loaded the fixture incorrectly. Eight of diamonds. See, that's why opponent may counter looking like the application logic is correct. Try the test again now that it's updated. Okay, so now we've got a glass of eight. We can see that they don't have a two and the opponent must resolve. Perfect, this test passes. Let's do the last test case. Remove that dot only, put it on here. Okay, and again, this is very similar. We're just loading the fixture. Okay, and then the case here is opponent must resolve when the player has a queen and glasses and their opponent uh, does not have a two in hand. That's the case that we care about here because this could catch an edge case if our conditional was incorrect. So here we want the player to have glasses and a queen. And then the opponent does have a two. Okay, great. Player will have one card in hand, play the one off. This should be visible and say that the opponent must resolve. Play the one off, opponent must resolve. Perfect. Okay, so the last thing to do here is to remove this dot only and let's run the entire suite because this way we can check. Um, actually, I'll, I'll run the describe block for all the new tests that we just ran. And you can use dot only on a describe block to run all the tests inside it. And this way I'll make sure that I didn't break any of the previous functionality around when to say that the opponent may counter. So that first test already passed. Second test also passed. All right, looks like we got it. There we have it. So we passed all of the tests in this block. And then the last thing to do will be to run the entire suite of regression tests such that we can make sure that we didn't actually break anything else in the entire application. And the way to do that um, is either locally you can run it with um, clear npm run test GUI, and this will run the entire suite of tests, or um, when you open a pull request against Cuddle, the entire suite will also run in CI. And so this way we can uh, make sure that we don't introduce new regressions that break the rest of the tests. Lastly, I'll, I'll remove the dot only, 
on that describe block to make sure that we run this entire file and not just the, uh, the part of it that I was working on. So test-driven development makes engineering faster by bootstrapping your application into the exact situations that you're working on. It makes it more precise by laser focusing your attention on exactly the uh, edge cases and contexts that you're developing, as well as the precise requirements of how the application is supposed to behave in those situations. And this gives us increased confidence that new features and fixes work exactly as they're intended and don't introduce any regressions that break existing behavior. Thanks again for watching. This has been a Cuddle Code tutorial. If you like this, consider liking and subscribing to the channel for more Cuddle content. We've got gameplay tutorials, tournament footage, as well as other cool code tutorials where you can learn full stack web development using test-driven development for Cuddle.cards. See you next time.